Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crumpton News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Amanda Rowley. Let's get started. Tonight's Spokane City Council meeting kicked off with some heated public comments. Several people came forward expressing their concerns with council's potential plans to censure Mayor Nadine Woodward. This all stems from Woodward's appearance at a Christian nationalist event with former state representative Matt Shea. Those who spoke at tonight's meeting were either supporting Woodward or defending the religious event. The Spokane City Council Quiet. Quiet. are nothing but short of communist jackals. Why are you condemning good? Um, the ones who are politicizing the event are you guys. There was no hate. There was no racial aspect. The mayor was in good faith. Now, council members Betsy Wilkerson and Zach Zapone announced plans to sponsor a resolution that would censure Mayor Woodward. However, that resolution has not come to city council just yet. In our interview with Zapone last week, though, he said the censure is a strong formal warning that Woodward's behavior is not OK. We've heard from members of our community um, daily at this point that are still upset about what happened and think that it is inappropriate, and it is inappropriate. In the meantime, Spokane voters will still have a say on the proposed anti-camping initiative after city officials and homeless advocates, advocates spent a summer battling for a spot on the ballot. A Spokane County Superior Court judge dismissed a lawsuit from Jules Helping Hands and former City Council President Ben Stuckert. That lawsuit sought to remove a citizen's measure on the November ballot that would ban camping within 1,000 feet of parks, daycares and schools. And Spokane police are currently looking for who may be responsible for the vandalizing of the Pride sidewalk on Perry Street. A word is spray painted on the road, but it is not clear what it exactly it says. We will update you with any new developments when we learn more. And let's talk weather now. Temperatures dropping back into the 70s today, but warmer weather will return later this week. Cody Proctor has a look at how warm we're talking about. Hey, Cody. Hey there, Amanda. And as we head into tonight, it's actually pretty comfortable as we head into our 10 o'clock hour right now. Temperatures over at the Spokane Airport are at 70 degrees right now. Winds are coming out of the southwest at 9 miles per hour at this very moment. Around parts of our region, we're mostly hanging out in those low 70s, so it looks like Coeur d'Alene is down into the low 60s. Standpoint right now in the upper. 50s tonight and around the region. We're relatively calm around Spokane and uh, Coeur d'Alene and Sandpoint and Deer Park. Though Wenatchee is seeing some breezy winds right now. We're actually expecting some breezy conditions as we head into tomorrow thanks to a new system moving in, particularly around central Washington. And you can see that system right here that we're looking at. So watching that pretty closely with a cold front. Hour by hour though, as we head into tomorrow morning, it's looking to be a pretty comfortable start. Temperatures around 8 o'clock tomorrow morning in the low 60s. Pretty nice for those kids that need to head off to class and off to school. And then for the next three days, you can see we're looking to be in the upper 70s tomorrow and Wednesday start to gradually warm up. So summer not quite done with us just yet. Back to you, Amanda. Well, now tonight beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. Tonight, we've confirmed a Spokane law firm is conducting its own investigation into the Gray Fire. That fire destroyed 240 homes in the Medical Lake and surrounding area three weeks ago. The cause of the fire is still under investigation by the Department of Natural Resources. But to be clear, a lawsuit has not yet been filed at this time. But attorney John Allison told Krem2 this afternoon his office is in the midst of its own investigation. He said several homeowners affected by the fire contacted his office and he expects even more to come forward. The University of Idaho is delaying the demolition of the off-campus house where four students were killed. You may remember the landlord gave the house to the university after the murders last fall. The school initially planned to tear it down before this fall term, but families of the victims objected, saying it could be used as evidence during the suspect's trial. The new plan was to tear it down next month, but it's now on hold at least until December. And with the help of genetic genealogy and DNA testing, the Spokane County Sheriff's Office and Washington State Patrol solved a 45-year-old cold case murder. In 1978, 16-year-old Chrisanne Baxter was found dead in Spokane near power lines south and between 
Whitworth Drive and Division Street. Now, detectives at the crime lab were able to identify Baxter's suspected killer as Keith Lindblom, who died two years after her murder. Records show Lindblom was released from prison two months before Baxter's murder. And that was our night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website, crem.com. Well, extremely long security lines at the Gorge Amphitheater last weekend caused some guests to completely miss their shows. Krem 2's Janelle Finch tells us more about the mess from attendees who nearly missed part of the show that they paid for. Some fans looking forward to seeing the Lumineers perform at the Gorge on Friday were left disappointed. Not because of the band's performance, but because they didn't get to see the performance at all. Two back-to-back -back concerts plus added security measures led to extremely long entry lines, some causing hours of delay. Those delays led to people missing the concert and calling for refunds. Inland Northwest Lumineers fans counted down to the band's performance at the Gorge. Lori McDonald and her daughter had their tickets since March. Definitely excited. McDonald and her daughter left three hours early from Deer Park for the Friday night concert. She says three blocks from the venue, their excitement slowly faded. She said, let's go now. And I was like, sure, that's okay if we're down there early. And we weren't early, we were late. The mother-daughter duo ran into bottleneck traffic from fellow Lumineers fans and future Gorge concert goers. According to Live Nation, doors for the Lumineers open at 5.30 p.m. Friday. But by this time, camping for the Eric Church concert Saturday and Sunday had already opened. Every direction we could look, there was traffic just backed up. Lori McDonald says she and her daughter sat in standstill traffic for hours and missed most of the opening act. People were like getting out of their cars and just walking to the venue. And I don't know what they were doing with their vehicles, but we were considering just leaving our car in a field and walking if we had to. McDonald says she's thankful she was able to see the Lumineers take the stage. But she knows not everyone had the same luck. There were empty seats all around us that never, those people never showed up. The Gorge issued $50 in concert credit for fans who entered the concert after the Lumineers were already on stage. Live Nation, on behalf of the Gorge Amphitheater, says they are proactively providing a full ticket refund to anyone who missed any part of the Lumineers' performance. They say refunds will be processed by Ticketmaster within the next five business days. Earlier this summer, a man was able to bring in a gun to one of the gorgeous campgrounds where he shot and killed two people and injured several others. That deadly situation is what prompted more strict and thorough security measures, which also played a part in the delays in entry. In Quincy, Janelle Finch, Crime 2 News. Tonight, a tribute shining bright at the site where the Twin Towers fell 22 years ago today. It was a day that changed America forever. Mourners gathered in Lower Manhattan to remember the thousands of lives lost in the terror attacks. In keeping with tradition, family members read aloud the names of loved ones who were killed. President Joe Biden marked the somber occasion at a military base in Alaska after his trip to Asia. We never forget. We're never afraid. We endure. We overcome. We are the United States of America. And there is nothing, literally, historically, nothing has been beyond our capacity when we set our mind to it together. Speaking to service members, first responders, and family members, the president reflected on how the attacks changed the nation forever. And here in Spokane, it was Heroes Day at the Interstate Fair in honor, in honor of 9-11. So today, all veterans and first responders had free admission to the fair. Earlier today, area firefighters and the Spokane County Sheriff's Office commemorated the historic day with a ceremonial wreath laying right here at the Spokane County Fairgrounds. We're here to, to honor those lives, um, not just, uh, again, uh, the firefighters and police officers, but also the, you know, the thousands of uh, civilians that were killed there. And then also all the, the firefighters, police officers and civilians that are suffering now. That wreath was at the fair all day to help people remember and honor the lives lost 20 years ago.